At this point, I'm trying to get Corona just so I can be around. <laughs> um, pretend like I didn't say that. Like <laughs> I didn't hear that. Like I'm just gonna like I don't know what she's talking. No, she didn't say she wanted Corona. Like none of that. None of that's true. None of that. Oh Self quarantining. The quarantine order. Quarantined in their quarantine. Quarantine. The quarantine in place. Quarantine for the required fourteen days. Hey, what's up, people? I'm JC, and this is the QT, aka Quarantine Talks. Today, I'm joined by a longtime friend, Megan Aladi. All right, Meg is a yoga instructor. She's a henna artist, a freelance muralist. She's basically the real life Nola Darling, all right, running around these ATL streets. <laughs> She's one of the few people I know that have managed to turn her canvas style art into an actual living. She's a dope ass, interesting woman, which is why I asked her to jump on the pod. All right, so we're gonna talk about the origins of henna, how she got started in NYC. We talk about the new Netflix show, Black as Fuck, and last but not least, the awkwardness of Zoom parties and spoiled uteri. Which I think is plural for uteruses. <laughs> See what I did there? Y'all, we are idiots. And we spend the majority of this conversation laughing and joking. So it's definitely a fun one. And we're going to get into it. But there's Ed. Oh, this, is, this is so boring. Like, my apartment is turned into a little art studio. I got these huge canvases. I'm drawing, which is great. I'm just bored. Like yeah, I don't know. I'm starting to. Um, I was supposed to be in Brazil. Um, obviously, that didn't work out. <laughs> None of that international travel shit worked out for many Americans. Um, so, so it's like, but now nah, I was gonna be off for a month anyway. So it's like I really this doesn't and. How do I put it? And I don't really talk to a lot of, lot of, lot of people. So it's not really like that big of a thing for me. But at the same time, I miss restaurants. Like I miss going to eat. Um, and I think that's a big thing. And I miss like just shit being open. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bar, you know, like Governor Kemp's ass open everything up anyway. But motherfuckers ain't going outside. I won't trust that white man. So, or his boss. So, a lot of stuff is still not open. Yeah, no, ain't nobody fucking with, like, no. Like, oh, what are you, what are we? I mean, there's a few bars that are open. They're doing, like, liquor to go. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah, yeah, I've seen that. I've seen that. But, like, as far as people coming in and stuff, like, no, bitch, no. no. <laughs> like, but like, I mean, that's just people coming in and out. Like, I'm not going to go out and be like, oh, let me get some of that. I love it. I love it. Like, there's like black parties, but everyone's spread out. <laughs> <laughs> so go to a block party. Like, yeah, you know I'm saying, go to a block party. Like, I, I mean, I'd be out there watching. I don't know anyone. <laughs> she said, I'd be out there watching. Oh, my goodness. Every day at eight, they cheer. It's like firework, firecrackers or something on the patio. Really? I'm like, who's cheering for? I don't see them. Y'all are lit in Midtown. We just yeah. we cool. We cool it over here in Decatur. Like I live in a neighborhood. So like, <laughs> oh, my Park is super lit. Oh yeah, I be going to Beaumont Park sometimes. Every once in a while, yeah. I hit that up. So yeah, I mean, everybody's like, it's just it's like I said, it's it's a good thing and it's a bad thing because it's like people get breaks. You know, you get a break. If you normally would not have had a break, you have a break right now. You know what I'm saying? So if you don't use this for nothing else but as a chance to recharge your batteries then i mean that's wonderful like you know what i'm saying because you everybody can't be productive all the time every time everybody can't be creative all the time people deal with stress in different ways so you know what i'm saying if you've been dealing with stress and your main way to deal with stress is to take a break but you can't because you got kids or school and work and this and that and blah 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 well you ain't got none of that shit right now <laughs> so, but you know how like, when you charge your phone and it says battery sufficiently charged? Yeah, that's where you yeah, have it. <laughs> like three weeks ago. <laughs> oh, God. Like, 
like that's really, <laughs> that's really like I can have in highs and lows. Like I get like super like creative and productive. Like I'm gonna take a class. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna learn how to do this. Let me look up some recipes. I'm about to cook. That lasts for about a week. <laughs> I'm like sleeping in till two. I'm barely getting out the bed. I'm I like, mean, why? Like, why? I mean, like, <laughs> Speak laziness. Like, oh god, it's so funny. Do I need a shower? Well, <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna see me today? Yeah, it's like, am I going me? outside? No. Okay, I could skip a day. I mean, like, have I sweated today? No. No, I really don't even really shower unless I go. I, I bike ride every morning, so that's the reason why I do shower. But other than that, like, no, I haven't done. I haven't sweated. I haven't done anything. I've sat at this computer for eight hours. I'm gonna go to sleep and repeat the process. Like you know, it's just, just whatever. Like it ain't really. So I, I, I got mad at myself. I have to do laundry, and I was just looking at my laundry basket for like thirty minutes. Like, <laughs> where'd I go? <laughs> <laughs> And I have to pay for my laundry. So I was like, what? <laughs> this can Why wait. I, I can wait laundry another laundry load or another week. This ain't no big deal. Like, I was like, where did, where did I wear this? Where did I go? <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> I spilled water on myself to hurt. I think it's so funny about this is everyone thinks that the people they know don't have Rona. So it's always like the people you don't know. Um. So I was like, I know her. She ain't got it. I can go visit her. Right. I can go visit this person. I can go visit this person. I know two people personally that have had it. And then I know either through my roommate or somebody or a couple other people. I know like a bunch of people that have it. Like a few of his family members have it. Um, a few family members of my friends have it. Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I mean, it's different for everybody. Like this is majority young people that we're talking about. So we're not looking at like death. But there are, like, uh, my roommate, like, his cousin or something like that, they have, like, underlying health conditions, and they're a little older, and they have it. Like, the whole house has got it. Her, her son, and her, and her mom. So, you know, so, but they all live together, so that makes sense. So, you know, yeah. so it's, like, one of those things, like. And then I made a joke. Um, so, I've stopped joking about it now, because I had made a joke to someone, and he was like, yeah, like, I have several family members in the hospital. It's not funny. All right, I'm not making jokes anymore. I'm just going to stay clear of the joking on the Rona thing. I'm just like, oh, yeah, I had that moment too. <laughs> I was joking about it. And someone was like, you know, I know someone who died from it. I was like, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we still fucking laughing. We ain't shit. <laughs> I was asked today. Um... <laughs> Okay, yeah, it's fashionable, but yeah. is it really safe? Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't Isn't it supposed to be like a certain mask? I don't know. Listen, I don't wear a mask, so I don't, it don't make me no difference. I don't care. I don't, I don't, well, I don't wear them because when you put them over your nose, it fogs, fogs up, up your, your glasses. glasses. Yeah. Yeah. So. Now, now you're touching your face. With, um, yeah. Exactly. So. So. But, um, uh, hey, guys, what's going on? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm JC. <laughs> And um, welcome to the episode of Quarantine Talks. If you are wondering who I've been talking to for the past couple minutes, it's the homie Megan. Say hi, Megan. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> now she just got like nervous. Now she just like clammed up. Like before she's all, like talking to that, she's like, oh, hi. Uh, are people I know, live from my apartment where I've been for two months. <laughs> live from <laughs> <laughs> Same sis. Uh, <laughs> so, all right, go. My, my space of living really well. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and tell the people uh, who you are, what you do, where you're from. Um, okay, so hi, Megan Allity. I am originally from New York, but I was abused in Atlanta. Um, I'm an artist. I do henna art. Um, I do Mandela style paintings. I'm also a yoga instructor. Mm-hmm. Um, just missing all of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> she's totally Nola Darling from um, She's Gotta Have It. She's like, I'm talking to the real life Nola Darling. You know, it's very artistical type of girl. 
I, well, well, the only thing I like about this quarantine is my apartment is really turning into a studio. Like, I had paintings everywhere. I bought some really huge canvases. So I'm taking the time to just do a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Um, I got some new rugs. So. I got some new rugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got some new rugs. Well, I didn't get them. My mom was trying to, like, cheer me up since I'm alone. <laughs> And she just, I don't know why she bought me rugs, mm-hmm. but every week I was getting a new rug in the mail and I didn't understand. It. <laughs> and the funny part is like, my apartment is carpet. So I was like, where do you want me to put these, these rugs? rugs. Like, yeah, like, uh, I mean, can you put an area your rug on carpet? I mean, is I that mean, there tricky? is one because I had nothing else. Okay. But... I, she, she bought me four rugs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you like, it's like, why, why are these rugs here? Anyway. Like, Thanks, Mom. Food <laughs> um, <laughs> <Moon> is improved. <laughs> and now you got something to do. You can figure out where to put the rugs at. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, well, yeah. I have one in my carpet in my living room, and I literally like, put a whole bunch of pillows around it, and now it's like a little fort. <laughs> <laughs> I do art. <laughs> She's like, I do art. So I mean, the first month of quarantine, I was on my couch, and now I'm on my floor. So that's cool. I think next month I'll be in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Um, how long have you been artistical and doing yoga and doing mandalas? Um, I want to say about four years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I haven't been drawing very long. Like, a lot of people think I grew up drawing, which I didn't. Um, I drew, doodled a little when I was, like, four or five, but that was it. Like, in college, I wasn't focused on drawing. Um, it wasn't until a few years after college when I was working, I would doodle a lot, and I got a lot of feedback. So I just decided maybe this would be something. Maybe I can go into this direction, see where it leads me mm-hmm. to. Um and yeah, it's been great. Why did you feel like you started? Like, what are you? Why do you feel like that happened? Well, I was working in New York. I was working in advertising, and I was laid off, unfortunately. And at the time, oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, oranges. Yeah, inside yeah. joke. Oranges. <laughs> I remember. Okay, okay, go, go. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um. So at the time, everyone was like, you know, you actually have really a lot of potential doing art. You should really pursue that. And in New York, there's a lot of markets, a lot of street markets, um, a lot of different ways you can be a vendor. So I explored that, made some prints, put my stuff on like mugs, pillows, notebooks, uh, phone cases, what have you. Hmm. And I just sold a lot of stuff. And I did that for a while just to keep me afloat. And then someone suggested I do henna because my style is very similar to henna work. Mm -hmm. So I literally bought a whole bunch of cones. I made a sign that said henna, $10. And I sat there. And I remember the first person that came up to me was like, I want the Rihanna. And I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) What is a Rihanna? What was that? Rihanna tattoo. You know her hand tattoo? It's like a henna inspired Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's a real tattoo? Yeah, Yeah, that's a real tattoo. I didn't know that. I thought it was henna. Okay, oh. Well, it's henna inspired, but she has a real version. Oh, okay. Oh. And then when I moved back to Atlanta from New York, I literally Googled henna shop in Atlanta and I found one and I called them and was like, are you hiring? Sent them some photos and she hired me right away. And I didn't think I would be that good, but now I'm doing like huge $300 back pieces, thigh pieces, whole heads, Cause that's what I'm like when you, cause like, okay, most artists are starving, but um, you have your own apartment and you look like you eat. So I'm just like, how does that, like, not in that way, not in that way, <laughs> not in that way. <laughs> I got, that was a word trap. That was a word trap. Well, 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 that was a word trap. <laughs> it, I mean, like, it doesn't look like, you know, you're, uh, you're without money. So I was going to say, like, is that lucrative? Like, do I, you know, like, I never really thought. <laughs> you look like you eat. <laughs> I mean, I'm a tourist. I do love to eat. <laughs> Than I thought I would have. Like it's it's ridiculous. Um, 
I didn't think this whole world of henna existed, but it me does. Either. Until you me started either. talking to me about it. I'm like, wait, you have a job knowing that? Like they paint you? <laughs> and it's crazy. Like I, I'm like, whoa, a lot of people get henna and a lot of people get henna for like to cover up scars, um, for like when they're going on vacation. Um, a lot of women get it for like tummy tucks. So they won't feel so insecure when they go to like the Bahamas or something and they want to wear a swimsuit. They'll put like a nice design over it. Um, I get him for a lot of commercials when they need like fake tattoos um, for plays and stuff when they need that. Oh, wow. Um, a lot of like events. Um, I need to like, I, it's not like I need to be a <laughs> henna artist. So like, I'm just saying. I mean, it's, it's a lot of different directions that I didn't know I was going to. And mm -hmm. I even went to like a henna convention and I was like, this, this is this. And it was in LA. Um, it was definitely like a hippieville. Like everyone was a straight hippie. I don't think anyone showered. Um, white people, but, um, but it was, it was so much henna. Like, they literally spent three days just drawing on each other. And I discovered a lot of people really do this for a living. And a lot of people do it for weddings. They travel and do it. Um, conventions, markets. And it's just one of those unconventional jobs. But you can make a lot of money doing it. How long does henna last? It'll last for about two weeks. Okay. And so, like, what is it? Is it, like, ink? Or what is it? Like, what is and it I, made of? It's... <laughs> It's plant based. Okay. Um, so henna is a plant. So and it's you vegan. Break it yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, and you break it up into its a powder form, and then you mix it with like essential oils, like lavender or eucalyptus, or some people put sugar in it to get that kind of paste like material. Okay. Yeah. And so you just like apply it like what, like a quill or something or like a paintbrush or like, how does that work? <laughs> so you roll it up in this uh, plastic little cone. Okay. Um, kind of like a blunt, I guess. All right. <laughs> I was going to say a pastry bag, but you know. Oh weed. yeah, pastry Yeah, no, weed. All right. 420 was recent. So, I mean, let's, let's go. Um, well, it's all 420 really. Um, the whole month. Well, you cut the tip and you squeeze it out, and um, when you apply it on your skin, it like mixes with the protein in your skin, I believe. I'm not too sure about the scientific part of it, mm -hmm. but um, once you leave it on there, maybe about five, six, maybe even longer, it stains your skin, and then when you wash that paste off, your skin is stained for about two weeks. Oh, so you literally wash it off and it stays. It's not like you have yeah. to leave the paste up there. No. So oh. when you want to leave the paste on for a while, the longer you leave the paste on your skin, the darker of a stain you're going to have. Oh. So some people have the paste on for like two days, one day, a few hours. Like you can leave the paste on as long as you want. But once you're ready to wash it off, then you have that stain. And it's like a regular tattoo. Like you can wash your hands, do whatever you want. And eventually it fades out. Oh, wow. That is... I've learned so much during this conversation. Um, it's that's, literally like you're a real tattoo, but it goes away. Oh, huh, that's really cool. Like, I want henna now. Like, I want to get some henna shit done. But, like, okay, so men, can men get henna? Or is it, like, mainly, like, a women? I feel like if India India was the birthplace of this thing, is it? Am I right? Um. Well, from what I've learned from the shop that I work for, um, it's dated back to Egypt. Okay. Oh, black folk. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They didn't call it henna. They called it like face mask or face paint or something like that. But okay. Henna. Okay. Um, but it's most commonly known from India from like weddings or some kind of celebration. Mm. And so like, oh, so, but like, is it mainly women that get it or is it mainly like who gets it mainly? I mean, a lot more women get it than men okay. because of the design patterns are a little more feminine, but men can get it. I mean, I can take a henna paste and write thug life across. <laughs> you can get whatever you want nowadays. Like men come in with all types of tattoo ideas and I fulfill that. Like henna is not just in a box. I like, don't think you have to come in and I give you this weird henna pattern. Like I've done skulls. I've done crosses. Hmm. I've tried to do like a Tupac drawing um i definitely wrote thug life on a couple of people mm -hmm. one guy comes in he gets like faith love um some other words across his face um i do a lot of like the samoan henna right. style tattoos like mm -hmm. the rock 
Have you ever thought about like being an actual tattoo artist? Yeah, definitely. Um, I still might. <laughs> I was why why not? Why you ain't did it yet? Well, I mean Corona, it's but like afterwards. Whole, yeah, Corona like definitely stopped that. Yeah. Um it's definitely a whole process to tattooing. One, because most apprenticeships are not paying. And I think at this point in my life, I don't know if I can really do like an unpaid internship. I don't know if I have time for that and keep up my lifestyle of living alone and eating as much as I do. (laughs) (laughs) Not going to let me live that down, are you? Just just going to break that, throw it in there. Um, But I I have found somebody who's really good and who has agreed to mentor me. So maybe after, you know, quarantine is over, I will explore that again. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm nervous to tattoo. Like I'm a softie, so I don't know if I can really hurt someone. I'm gonna have to find like this inner bug in me. <laughs> like, Just tattoo your tattoo your bug, like I enter your enter your heart. Because like, oh. <laughs> a lot of people think henna hurts, and then when I touch them, they're like, "Oh, this is so soothing and wonderful." Like, like it's paint. Since when is paint yeah. ever hurt? Like I don't. And I don't like hurting people. I mean, I'm a yoga instructor. Like, those are probably the same people that took those um, Lysol injections that the president recommended uh, a couple weeks ago. <sighs> Tea is at a real good temperature right now. Um. So yeah. <laughs> um. Um. How has like quarantine like affected your work? Because like, is this is your job considered technically a gig work or is it like? Do you have like a W two and like a paycheck? Um, I'm considered like a contract worker, so okay. I'm ten nine. Um, I'm definitely not essential, right? Whatsoever, right? <laughs> I'm not working. Mm-hmm. I haven't worked in two months. I'm very glad I save. Right. You know, when everyone told me to save for a rainy day, then this huge thunderstorm. Yeah. Shit, we in a monsoon season, girl. Like you know. <laughs> Check is about to hit in a couple days. I was like, okay. Oh, for the unemployment? Uh, not even unemployment, just a twelve hundred. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, why are you waiting for unemployment? I did. I haven't heard anything yet. Oh. I mean, they just opened it up to ten ninety nine, maybe like a week and a half ago. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah, before that they didn't. I like, thought. I- I filled it out and they didn't ask anything about COVID and it was looked like I was going to fail because normally I wouldn't get unemployment. Mm-hmm. So I was like, if I get denied, I understand why. And then a week and a half ago, they opened it up to 1099 and it was like a whole different application. And they were like, were you laid off because of COVID? COVID yeah. yeah. I just did mine yesterday too because uh, I'm yeah. furloughed. So it's like they paid us, but I'm like, uh, I'm still going to apply. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like they give us like, uh, they give us half of our salary guarantee but so that's like not a lot of money compared to what i normally make so i was just like well i'll just file and see what happens i still ain't got my check yet so my 1200 dollar check i ain't got mine yet so oh i can see it when i check my online banking in my savings it says pending mm. 1200 so it's it's coming <coughs> if you check the irs site it'll tell you like the date that it's gonna post mine says april 30th but um, when we spoke earlier, you said like your boss was trying to make you come to work or something like that. When, oh, when she heard that Georgia was opening. Okay. Oh, she was she trying was, to make you come to work? She was like quick to open. She was like, Friday, what's up? You pop it. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wasn't, I wasn't ready. <laughs> all right. Um, should we do this? Is it all right? What are we going to do? Like, <laughs> I'm a henna artist. Like, I have to get close to people. I don't right. really... I feel like we should take baby steps, like right, you know. Right, right, right. She was like, "Okay, okay, maybe we'll just wait until the end of the month." I was like, "Oh." <laughs> <laughs> So I was like, like, did you? Because I was like, how did that like make you feel? Like, did you go? Like, what? Like, how does? Because I'm just like, I didn't go. We just had a conversation about it, and she was like, I don't want to force you if you don't feel comfortable. And I was like, well, honestly, I wouldn't mind making some money, but I don't think it's the smartest decision to open up so soon. Maybe we should wait. And then my mom was on the other line, like, don't go, you're gonna die. Because like your because like your family and stuff is still in New York, right? Well, my mom is here. My parents are here. 
here. Oh, your parents are here. Okay, cool. Yeah, my mom is here. She's like working from home with three kids. She's a super hypochondriac. So mm -hmm. she's like, stay away. Like she comes and drops me on food and she puts it on the curb and just drives away. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> mom, you can talk to me. <laughs> I was like, what if someone takes my food? And she's like, I'm around the corner watching it. I'm like, what are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> if I don't make it downstairs. No, you <laughs> just said at the beginning of this podcast that people think that they friends don't have it. So you just because you her daughter don't mean that you ain't going to get her sick. You ain't been in her household. True. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, if I get sick, who's going to take care of the kids? And I was like, okay. You're right, because I ain't trying to. So I know. That's <laughs> <laughs> we need you. We need you healthy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> you drop those food off at the curb. It's fine. <laughs> but then he's like, my building's real ghetto, so I don't know who lives here and who doesn't. People steal stuff, and I'm pretty sure homeless people walk in here all the time and wash their clothes in our laundry mat. Where do you live? Midtown. <laughs> <laughs> Where the fuck are you? Where the fuck do you live at? I'm so confused. Like, like, Midtown. Midtown. Yeah, the area is nice, but there are mad homeless people walking around, in and out the building. I don't know who lives here. <laughs> I saw one man sleeping on our staircase for two days. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of sucks for them though because like um i was i was listening to something and i was oh oh god there was this video and there was a doctor in miami he had actually went out to test homeless people and you know try to provide them you know uh like resources and of course he was arrested in front of his house by police because black and um the whole <laughs> because black <laughs> You know, nice neighborhood, you know, black, yeah. you know. You don't need uh, to <laughs> and so um, he was saying that he's like, these are people that, and I've heard this from multiple people actually, because they make a good point. Like, all of this sheltering in place and quarantine and stuff works for us, but what about homeless people? Because homeless people still are in contact with us every day, you know? So if one of them gets sick, they don't have masks. They don't have gloves. They don't have a place to wash their hands. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the businesses that they would go into to use these basic things, like running water, are closed now, right? And nobody's mm -hmm. in because of COVID. So it's like, well, what do we do about these people? Because these people still need help. And these people are still, in essence, a public health risk, even more so now because they don't have even like the most basic shit that they used to to help themselves. So, you know, I think it's kind of like one of those things, like, it kind of sucks because it's like, damn, you know? It, and, and it you, really does. And, you There's know, a, um, America. There's an organization here in Atlanta, was it Love Beyond Walls? Mm -hmm. And we did, like, the, um, the water fountains or sinks where they put it all over the city where homeless people can go in really? and wash their yeah, and there's like a pump at the bottom. So if you step on the pump, it produces water and it comes through. Really? Yeah, you should check it out. That's fascinating. He, um, he got a lot of sponsors to help him out, but he put them all throughout the city. That's I haven't seen one because I haven't been anywhere, but <laughs> <laughs> I've been keeping up with it on social media, and it's got a lot of publicity. What's, what'd you say the name was of it? Um, the organization is Love Beyond Walls. Love Beyond Walls. Okay, cool. Yeah, they do a lot of work for homeless people in Atlanta. Hmm. A lot. That's their main focus. I'll definitely look into that because I might be able to. I might have some resources for the guy. Um, so you never know. Um, God, I wish I could just sometimes. You know how like I because I I can do this for everybody else. I just can never do it for myself. Like I can never make a phone call and put me like on the news. But like God knows, like let somebody else do something. I'm just like, oh, you know, hold on, I'll make a call and see if I can get you some money. Like you know, what I'm saying like I just like I can't do it for me for whatever reason. Like, <laughs> but like <laughs> it's just like I don't know, it's like, whatever. But all right. Um, a hot topic that I want to talk to you about is black as fuck. Black AF <laughs> on Netflix. Um, it's gotten so if y'all haven't watched it, haven't seen it, I don't know how you have it, but like the guy Kenya Bears creator, blackest, mixed dish, grownish, all the issues, has created this uh show on Netflix where it's like a mockumentary style of him and his life. 
um, and his kids. Because Kenya Bear's got a shit ton of kids, right? I didn't even know. Six? Wow. Yeah, Kenya Bear's got kids, kids. He be fucking for him. And so, like, the crazy thing about it is, like, okay, so it's called heat because, A, colorism, because everybody on the show is light-skinned except for two people. And, B, I think people just think that it's just not as good as what they were expecting. Um, and so, like, when I look into it, number one, Kenya Barris's wife actually looks a lot like Rashida Jones. Um, like, a lot like Rashida Jones. So I actually looked it up recently, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, shit. Yeah, like, damn near same girl. Um, just longer hair. His yeah, wife has longer hair. Yeah, longer hair, but damn near same girl. So it's like, that's one thing. Um, but, yeah, it's just been a lot of, like, backlash around that. So what do you think about Black AF? Um so I mean I know y'all can't see Megan, but uh Megan <laughs> Megan is black, but she you knows she's a little lighter skin. She's she's she a red bone. Um Am I? Yeah, you you would be right. You would be considered red bone. You would be seeing I thought it was like a nice caramel drizzle cinnamon top. Red bone. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I- at first, like episode one, I'm not gonna lie, it didn't win me over. Same. It was just really corny and Same. overly scripted. Same. And I don't know. I, I mean, maybe I'm just overstimulated from watching so much Netflix. I was like, this is not what I'm feeling right now. But I'll just, I'll just keep watching. Mm-hmm. And after a few episodes, I started to really like it. Mm-hmm. I was naturally laughing. <clears throat> I was like, oh, this, right. this is kind of funny. Um, I think a lot of people might not like it because. I mean, every episode is like this. Is there's a message behind it, right? Yeah, and maybe some people just want just pure comedy. They right. don't always want to like think so hard about it. But I mean, these are real things that Black people go through all the time and have to deal with and question. So I like that. Um, I haven't necessarily watched mixes or grownish or blackish. Um, I haven't either. So I'm not I've seen grownish, but I haven't really seen. Blackish. I've been. I've seen a couple episodes, but I haven't actually like sat down and watched. I Black-ish. haven't binged it. Like I've watched yeah. a few things. Um, mainly mixes because I love Tracy Ellis Ross. Okay. But I haven't like really binge watched it, so I'm not used to this style. Um, but there are some. It's it's some funny points. I like the messages that he brings up, especially the ones with the black fathers. Um, the episode I'm on now is six, and it's like um about Rashida or just being a mom and how you have to give up your life for your kid and why you can't have both and why nobody really questions the man. Right. Go off. It's so easy for him. (laughs) Go off. I see it. (laughs) I know. That's really personal to me because now, I mean, I'm about to turn 30 next month and I'm going to be quarantined in my birthday, but now I'm looking to settle down and have kids. And I still want my career. So this issue is very prevalent to me because it's like, I want both. And even I was talking to my mom because I'm dating someone. And I was like, yeah, you know, we've been talking about kids and, um, you know, being together. She's like, no, think about your career. (laughs) Why can't I have both? Both, exactly. Why can't you have both? Why is it one or the other? I was like, you have a career. You have three kids. And she's like, but it's hard. I was like, well. No one said it was going to be easy, easy but no right. one questions the man. He can just have so many kids, and no one's going to be like, "Well, what about your career?" Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's very um, which I wanted to ask. Uh, so like I too um, okay. So the first three episodes of Blackish, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna make it through this, um, because it's just not black, black as fuck. Black, excuse me, yeah, black as fuck. The first, thank you, thank you. The first three episodes of Black as Fuck, I was like, or Black AF, I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it through this, but I was like, you know what? I'm committed and I'm gonna finish it. Like, I'm invested in this at this point. So, right around episode three into four is when it started to get funny to me. Like, is that the, the black barbecue? Because that's when it started to win. Yeah, with. like right around that episode, it started to get like, I was like, okay, now we're picking up some traction here. Cause yeah. it was like, I just, I don't know. Um, on the one hand, I think it caught heat because it's not as funny as I think the other shows are. And then the, on the other hand, it's not bad, though. So it's just kind of like solidly in the middle, I think, as far as content is concerned. And then the other thing is, I was listening I was listening to, uh, he did an interview with Amanda Seals. 
And she said to him, I don't think that you should have played yourself in this TV show. I think you should have hired someone else. And after watching it, I kind of agree. I feel like it's just him playing himself in a mockumentary, in a mockumentary about his family is just too much because I feel like you can't adequately separate yourself from the work when it's about you. Um, you know, I get like you wanting to do it because it is about you, but there needs to be a separation between church and state. And it's like I feel like that's where a lot of the a lot of the stuff falls flat at sometimes is because he's playing himself. And so you're trying to play a comical character of yourself, being yourself in front of yourself. Like, you know, that's just too much going on at once. So I feel like if you would have, if he, if he would have put somebody else in it, I feel like it would have been better. Um, well, who, who could play him? Somebody else. I don't know. It's lots of black, it's lots of black people that need jobs. It's lots of six foot I mean, tall yeah, yeah, yeah. black That's actors true. that need jobs. Like, you know what I'm saying? So he could have found, I, I mean, hell, he probably could have, I don't know, like J.R. Bland, the dude that wrote for, he's like, he has this show called Giants and he has a couple other things. Um, He could have did it because that dude's like six something. Oh, wait, not him. Not the Bland. Wait. I don't know. One of them dudes could have did it. And anybody, anybody else could have done it. I think outside of him. So I think, I think because he's playing himself, like, and trying to be funny about playing himself, like, I think it just falls flat. Because ordinarily speaking, like listening to that interview and just different stuff, like, he's funny, but he's not funny. Ha ha. In a sense, he's a very subtle, intelligent humor. So I think in this show, that's already intelligent as fuck. And you're trying to like, you know what I'm saying? You're playing against yourself. You're playing against your strengths. So I think that's where it falls flat at, me personally. Um, and that's where a lot of people... But, I, I, I can definitely say that. And from yeah. reading some of the reviews, I think I can agree with that. I mean, I haven't heard anyone say maybe he shouldn't have played himself. So mm-hmm. maybe I do need to watch that interview. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I like his role. And I think he's very funny. And to me, he makes it for me. But I like that kind of dry, intelligent, sarcastic humor. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I'm a huge fan of, like, The Office. And I just, I like that dry humor. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> he kind of won it over for me when he was talking about, you know, being a good father and like, forgetting the kid's birthday. Mm-hmm. He just reminds me of my own father mm-hmm. a little bit. Mm-hmm. So fair. I like him in that role. I don't think I can see anyone else play him. I can't. I definitely can't. I don't. I can I, because the because of, like I said, just because of the role that he's playing, somebody else could play like like anybody that has a drier comedic wit. Like even somebody like Kevin Hart could have played it. You understand know what I'm saying? Because while Kevin Hart is kind of like wow, he can also be dryly funny. You know what I'm saying? I, I but I'm not saying Kevin Hart could have played it because the nigga's like five four and Kenya Barris is six five. Like absolutely not. But what I'm saying is he's a whole like Kenya Barris is a whole two people two ahead. Of, it's still two different styles of humor now. That's true. Kevin Hart. And and then I think the other thing is too like there's this kind of how do I explain it? I want it because like it's a delicate way to say what I'm trying to say. And me and my roommate just had this discussion last night because he was watching it too. Um, He couldn't make it through it. But, like, Black people, historically, like, our comedic tone is way more in your face than subtle, right? You know what I'm saying? And a lot of intelligent comedies have subtle, dry humor. And that falls flat to a lot of us because we want the... Black people want the laugh right here and now they don't want to have to like kind of like work their way into the laugh like then it just kind of ruins it so i think that that could be an issue too is that he's kind of like going against that kind of that grain like i am black i'm gonna put black people on tv but we're not gonna do the traditional black comedy we're gonna like walk our way into it a different way you know what i'm saying we're gonna do like a black seinfeld or like a black you know what i'm saying like that type of situation and black people don't historically like Seinfeld. Like I love Seinfeld. Seinfeld was one of the funniest I was like, things. I love Seinfeld. And right. You hit it on the nose because maybe that's why after a while I started. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it had to slowly win me mm-hmm, over, and now mm-hmm. that I got it, I feel like I get all the humor perfectly fine. But mm-hmm. definitely, I 
definitely. I I love Seinfeld. Yeah, Seinfeld's one of my favorite TV shows. Like I, I remember being like twelve and watching Seinfeld, and my friends coming over like, "What the fuck are you watching, nigga? Turn on Mountain." And I'm like, "Wait, wait, wait, give it a chance." Like, and they would be like, "Oh, this is actually kind of funny." And I'm like, "I know. You just gotta like get into it. It's not like the." Of Martin or the of the Fresh Prince, it's way more layered and intricate comedy. And I think Black people we just aren't used to layered and intricate comedy in that way, like a very smart kind of thing. Now I don't watch Parks and Recreation because I hate it. I don't watch that, but I do like The Office. The Office is fucking hilarious. Um, well, it's it's a similar type of humor. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I just don't like any polar. Um, but. And the funny part is, like, I like Parks and Recreation, I like Seinfeld, I like The Office, but when it came to, like, the Tyler Perry show, I do not like Tyler Perry. I can't get into it. It's not funny to me. And it's, like, all these different layers of black humor, and I do not think that type of humor is funny. Yeah, no. Corny. um, They would call us, they would call us bougie. Um, that's the they would call us bougie. <laughs> that's what that is. They would call us bougie. Now, no, not the Tyler Perry because all of the black people he employs in his and he studio. Said, he was like, I'm making it for specific type of people, right. and they get it. And right. I was like, when he said that, I was like, yeah. And so the other thing about that is, I've had this conversation with my roommate as well. Um, I said, you're a more basic person than I am. And I was like, let me explain because Your cat is <laughs> And I know, I know, I'm working on it, I know, I know. But it's there's no way sometimes to say certain Ooh. things because Ooh. the <laughs> Yeah <laughs> so, so your basic is <laughs> Okay, wait. No, right. I because okay, I I all right, I got it back, I got it back. Cause I said that to him and he looked at me like, nigga, what? And I was like, okay, wait. <laughs> Which is fair, because that's not the word. It's because words have connotation, right? And so basic in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means that it's a more simpler thing. So that's what I went to. I was like, you're more you're a simpler person than I am, right? And so <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? But like, because I had to, I had to break it back, and so now I don't say basic. I would have been, been behind your roommate looking at you like, nah, 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 nah. and so now I say now I say simple instead of basic uh, because that's so much better. But I mean, it's true. Like, is it? Is it? Though? It is because something can be simple but not be inadequate. You understand what I'm saying? So you No, can... I, I definitely get it, but I feel like if someone was to call me basic or someone was to call me simple, mm-hmm. I'd be like, you know what? You're calling me the same thing. <laughs> 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 but the thing is, like, but that's the thing about it. It's just like I equate those two no, I, words. I, I, get, I get the point yeah, you're yeah. I equate yes. those two words with the word ignorant. Like, ignorant has been conflated to mean like stupid, dumb, all these other good, all these other bad things. But like, ignorance itself just means that you do not know. It is not an insult. It is just simply a fact. If I don't know Spanish, I'm ignorant of the language of Spanish. I can say that, and it's true. It's not an insult. I'm not degrading myself. It's just me being like, yo, I don't know. You understand what I'm saying? And so there's a difference in between black people. We know this. There's a difference in between ignorant and ignorant. All right. Ignorant is all of those things that I said before, bitch, you stupid, dumb, ugly, whatever else. But if you ignorant, it's a difference. And so, like, you know, that's just the cultural thing in the way that we do it. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, it is, though, right? So, like. Getting back to simple or basic, like we have conflated the word simple and basic to mean bad because my roommate actually loved Tyler Perry, everything. And so, like, <laughs> but he doesn't like Seinfeld, but he does watch Frasier. And I hated Frasier for a long time until I gave Frasier a chance. And I'm like, oh, this is actually funny. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's just like, did he say that. what he liked about Tyler Perry? Like, why he liked it? Child. Don't get me started. I, it ain't. It's. I, I don't know. I think it's just like his favorite show by Tyler Perry is the Have and the Have Nots. Um, I fucking hate anything by Tyler Perry that requires like more than a slapstick laugh. 
because it's repeated dialogue. Like, you're not getting in this house. Why are you in my house? Why can't I be in the house? Because I said that you can't come in my house, Craig. Why are you at my house? You're not getting in my house. I done told you about showing up in my house at all hours of the night. You're not coming in my house. Well, I don't know why I can't come in this house. I was just in the house before. So, like, that's how that's how the shit rolls. Like, there's no, there's no, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it, no complex dialogue. No. Don't go in the house. Just don't go in the house. <laughs> Bitch, we've talked about you not entering this house for like 15 minutes. Okay? Why do we need to do this? Okay, that's Tyler Perry's style of dialogue. This is what he does. Now, you know what I'm saying? What Tyler Perry lacks in dialogue, he kind of makes up for in visuals. Right? So there's like, let me get let me get there. So there's like <laughs> there's there's sex, there's fights. There's good looking people to watch. You understand what I'm saying? So you understand what I'm saying? He makes up for it in what he gives the people to look at visually. You don't give a person a very complex story. You keep the story kind of simple and basic and you elevate it using the physical elements and not necessarily the thematic elements of it. I mean, yeah, I agree. All the men in Tyler Perry's movies and shows are very attractive. Mm-hmm. But the women look good too? The women look good, yeah. Tika Sumpter's gorgeous. That's my I favorite. Mean, I- they don't like Tyler Perry. Exactly. Uh, Me either. <laughs> but the difference in between somebody that may like a Tyler Perry whatever and the difference in between me and you is we are both people that like delve deeper and we like to have our art do the same thing. Right. And though there are some people who like their art to just be mindless. They watch this TV as an escape from their everyday lives. You can sit up here and you can watch the have and have nots and watch all of this fantastical shit with bad acting because it brings you, it lets you escape for an hour, whatever the fuck you just went through for eight. You understand what I'm saying? And that's not, and now those are simpler people and that's not a bad thing. That's just a different type of entertainment base. You know what I'm saying? And that's just, that's just it. <laughs> you, looking at, you looking at me like this. Yeah, I mean, for argument's sake, I'm glad I'm not on the simple side. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, there ain't nothing wrong with that because those same people are the people like, do you watch Love and Hip Hop? Me either. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I don't, like, I, I mean, don't consume. I'm not a big fan of reality TV show. Me either. Um, the only one that I really like is The Circle off of Netflix. I thought that was pretty good. But even that is not and a... And I recently started watching Too Hot to Handle, and I just... That is not... Because, okay, The Circle is a... The Circle is not a run-in-the-middle reality TV show. It's complex. It has things for you to think about. Whereas... Oh, yeah, it's a good show, yeah. Yeah. Whereas Too Hot to Handle just got, like, good-looking people, like, having sex. Like, the the, the whole... They're not having sex. I the, don't think that's, so. that's what I'm saying. But, no, but that's the whole point. The whole point for these very attractive people, you have one simple goal. Don't I, be fucking... I don't understand fucking. how it's not hard to not have sex for a month. Like, just don't do it. But, again... Don't do it. Do you see the pattern with which I'm drawing? I'm giving you a mandala here. You get you got the pieces and shit. I'm drawing the circle. Everybody, I would just be unconscious every single day. Like don't right. touch nobody. And but so no, I, I get what you're saying. I get right. what you're saying. And so like, that's what I'm saying. Like some people it just doesn't, you know, and so I feel like a show like Black AF is trying to give you the best of both worlds. But it's like in that, if you're walking that line, you know, you're either gonna like it or you're gonna hate it. So, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. You're going to like it or you're going to hate it. I don't hate it. I don't like it. I don't love it, but I do like it. I do it's a like strong it. middle. Yeah, yeah, it's a strong middle. It's a strong middle. It's one of those I will watch once, maybe not over and over again. Um, I'll definitely watch the second season because I want to see how it progresses. There's a second season? I didn't it know. It might be. It might be. I think Kenya Barris, he uh, signed a very large uh, seven-figure deal with Netflix. So he'll definitely um, seven to eight I, figures. I do like him as a writer. Yeah. Um, no. I, I do think it's a very great show. I think it's shot well. Um, the production was great. Everyone looks great. Yeah. Everybody's pretty. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a great show. It's a great show. 
it's a like it's a yeah, it's a good show. Yeah. It's got really be great. Recommend for other people to watch it. I'd be like, yeah, you should definitely check out. It's worth checking out. Yeah, it's yeah, worth yeah. You know, I want to be like, fuck no, get that show off Netflix. <laughs> And I, I, I want to see more black shows written Exactly. By black I'm so supporting I'm everybody support black. That's what I'm doing. I'm here for everybody black. I'm rooting for everybody black. So, um, all right. That was that was our talk on black as fuck. I feel like I'm going to make a segment or something like that, but I ain't got it yet. So, yeah, I don't know. But we going to, I don't know what that segment going to be yet. But anywho. All right. Um, what's, what's, uh, so wait, we talked about you possibly becoming a tattoo artist. You got anything else up next? Nothing, okay. ma'am. <laughs> Celebrating a birthday pretty soon, you know. Figuring out who I'm invite to my Zoom party. Oh, that's about it. Mm-hmm. I actually went to someone's birthday um, Zoom party, mm-hmm. and it was honestly the saddest thing I've ever. <laughs> <laughs> and then I, I engaged in a couple of happy hours, and it was like it's almost. Almost like you have to laugh to keep from crying. Right? Like, we, we have to do this in order for we don't go insane. But it's like, I wore a nice shirt and I had my liquor and drinks ready and I was on the camera and I was like, woo, shots and drinking. And then it's like everyone was talking at once and I was like, huh? Who said that? Right. <laughs> it's a live and conference. It's like, and it's like, it's hard because you can't have any like side conversations. You just, it's like everyone's just, one person's like stealing a show and like we're just watching them like it's TV. And I'm just like sipping and watching my friend talk. And then afterwards, you're drunk and you're alone in your apartment and you're like, fuck. <laughs> I have, uh, I was actually invited to a couple and um, I politely declined because no. Um, I'm not one for like more than this is probably the most I've used FaceTime in my entire life. Um, but other than that, like I don't I don't again, I'm not an extroverted person. Uh, I'm deeply an introverted person. I talk to like five people on a weekly basis and that's it. Like on a you know, on a regular basis. So like it don't quarantine don't really affect me in the way that I think it affects other extroverted people, which sounds like it does you. Um, because I don't need to. I'm introverted. I am. But, oh, well, I'm a little bit of both. But, yeah. So I'm introverted and I definitely need to socialize. But quarantine has maxed up my introverted level. Like, that jar is full. It's all the way at the top. Like, I've been alone for two months. I'm here. I live alone. Like, people live with, like, their boyfriend, their roommates. So they're like, yeah, yeah, I'm introverted. But you have someone there. Mm. So when you don't have anyone there, it's a whole different feeling. Like, I'm actually, I can walk around this bitch alone, naked, Mm -hmm. titties all out. Mm -hmm. I can do whatever I want. I'm alone. (laughs) (laughs) And I can do weird shit. I'm alone. Like, I... (laughs) The only interaction I really have with people is virtually, and that's honestly really sad. Mm-hmm. And I, I look forward to going to the grocery store. I'll be talking to the lady in line. <laughs> what so a- how's your day? Like, what's going on? Like, <laughs> are you here all day? What it's about the party? boyfriend? Like, no, you don't come over? Like, well, okay, we're so dating. It's long, it's long distance, oh, and we're dating. So we already have a virtual relationship. Oh, okay. Well, and all this day was picked. Like, we can't fly and see each other right now. Where does Maybe he live? Maryland. Okay. Okay. Is this the same one? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I remember you were talking to someone okay. earlier. I have no other boyfriends in Maryland. Okay. Everyone else I was dating was in Atlanta. But no, no, no. He's the only one. So, so that answers my Corona Bay question. So I mean, like, well, y'all already had well, y'all virtual relationship game should be on ten. Then, like, at this point, I mean, if anything, like, he's quarantined, I'm quarantined. We just Facetime each other more often. Like, I roll out of bed and Facetime him. Like, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like we get to the point where we're not always talking. We're just like, you're there. He, I'm here, and we just go about our day. And like, I mm-hmm. cook. He's there. Um, I watch TV. He's there. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got to worry about nobody cheating because you always, I know where you at. You was on the phone with me. Yo, if you cheated in quarantine, you good. Like, 
I mean, he did fly down and he spent like a week with me um, in the beginning of quarantine, mm-hmm. which was really nice. Okay. The other thing it was like, it, there was no entertainment. Like we couldn't go out and do anything. It was just like. You got each other. Yeah, we and had sex. fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that's all you need. You know, you got, yeah. you got, you got each other. You got sex. You got Netflix. You know, I you know. can cook. He was, he was trying to join that, um, you know, that quarantine baby boom that's going to happen in about. Listen. <laughs> I just literally thought about all of the babies that's going to be born during this shit and all of the babies that's going to be conceived. You understand me? Oh, like, it's, we're going to have that. This is, this is the next, this is the next baby boom. This is the for next real. baby boom. Like, for real. Like, this is. Have you seen those memes online? There's like, um, Quarantina, Covita, mm-hmm. Quarantine with a K. <laughs> K-W-A-R-N-T-I-N-E. <laughs> Quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be Felix, no, Net Felix, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, you know, Epidemica. Epidemic. <laughs> okay, all right, oh, yo, oh, boy. I saw a quarantine preparedness, preparedness list. Condoms was like bold, circled, underlined, <laughs> along with everything else, along with the essentials. It was like condoms, circle. So, I mean, like, you know, I just... I mean, they still selling the Plan B pills. CBS, they so. is, but I can't be good for, like, continued use. <laughs> like, you can't take a Plan B pill every week. I feel like it's going like, to... I feel like it's going to spoil your uterus or some shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> you go want to have a baby and then like you know the doctor's gonna be like did you uh take like plan b pills every week during quarantine because your uterus is just it looks like hamburger meat like what's oh, going on <laughs> no. No, no, no. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> i mean i was just throwing out some options i don't really know. oh god this is what i'm like okay with being alone <laughs> yeah so. And then sometimes I FaceTime with some of my friends, and I have a friend, she lives with her mom, and I FaceTime her, and they got into an argument. <laughs> I said, girl, I call you to remind myself why I'm happy to live with <laughs> <Right. laughs> I said, ooh. <laughs> I called another girl. She had a newborn baby with her husband, and the baby would have stopped crying. I was like, ooh. <laughs> The thing that scares me most about this quarantine is that a lot of people think that everything's just going to go back to normal, and it's not. And that's the only thing that's worried me. Like, even if quarantine is over and I go back to work, like, I'm still going to be heavily affected. Like, my job depends on me interacting with people. Right. Am I really going to be going back to normal? Am I going to be making the same money flow as I was? Right. Um, teaching yoga classes, is that going to change? Right. Like, your job depends this will on people. my life for the long run. Yeah. And I mean, we're definitely going to lead more to like a cashless society because I pulled out a dollar somewhere one time and everybody looked at me like <laughs> <laughs> plastic only. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, I went to the ATM and put all my, all my ones in the bank because I was like, I guess I can't use y'all no more. <laughs> Like, that's going to change strip clubs. Like, what are you going to do? I never thought about it like that. Yeah, like, what are we going to throw? <laughs> Credit gift cards? <laughs> I mean, I don't, I... <laughs> Dollar gift cards. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we're done here. So, thank you. <laughs> we're, we're totally done here. Thank Sorry, you. that last thought I thought about strip clubs. Uh, like, wait a minute, what are we going to do? We're 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 done here. We're done, Miss Miss Elodie. Miss Elodie, I would like to thank you for joining us today yeah. on the talk of quarantine, quarantine talks. So you're awesome, and um, look at you, all red boned and curly hair and stuff, and stripy glasses. I know, man. I could be on the next Black AF. There you, you actually could. You could be one of the aunties. You could be like Kenya Barris' auntie. Why well, can't be a cousin? I'm not that old. That's a good point. You yeah. can be a cousin. Then they talk about that adultification. You just old. <laughs> <laughs> but you're an adult. Like you're, it only <laughs> counts if you're <laughs> a child. <laughs> <laughs> only counts if you're a child. 
couch and you're a child. I'm like, my brand new rug. Stop that at adult. <laughs> I'm not doing this no more. All right, y'all. We, <laughs> we, we gone, y'all. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye. And ladies and gents, that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you guys enjoyed the convo. If you want to be a guest on the show or you know somebody that might be a good guest for the show, go ahead and send an email over to me. That's jc at theovt.com. Once again, that is jc at theovt.com. This podcast is available on Apple, Spotify, and Anchor, so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a comment. And all of our content is now available on YouTube. We got video interviews, we got audio interviews, and original content all on the channel. Just type in the OBT Network and hit subscribe. Stay sane, stay safe, stay creative. Peace.